All right. Welcome to In Between Hairstylists. My name is Isabel Filion, and today we are going to talk about haircutting with the hand razor. This is such a beautiful tool, and a lot of people are afraid to use it. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to, I'm going to pick Elizabeth Allen's brain. And we're going to go from there. So I will go get Elizabeth. Let's bring her on. Hey, hello. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Yes. So we're going to talk about today for about 20 minutes, let's say. We're going to talk about hand razor. And it is a beautiful tool. And people, some stylists especially the the gen z's are afraid to use this tool so we want to um you know talk about it maybe give them some little tips and tricks and so they can get more familiar with the hand raiser and then they can start doing some beautiful work right absolutely it's one of my favorite tools um i i like to sculpt with it and i think um just like you know any tool that we use in our um in our um you know our, our tool bag right we um find that sometimes this one tends to be what do i do with it i i i i i know it's shiny i know it's sharp but i'm a little nervous <laughs> it, right so um once you once you feel confident in using the tool i think you'll find it's going to be confident in your work so i use that in when my i'm shaping and my design so all of my tools are important my my shears and my texturizer it's not just one tool so these are the things that are going to give me my end result that i'm looking for in the haircut but um this one sometimes i think clients go oh like we were talking, um, oh, I had a razor cut once. It was horrible. It didn't, you know, it it didn't do what I was want wanted it to do. And I think it's just because sometimes it might not have been used as properly, or right. it might have um, not given the proper effects of what you were trying to achieve with the uh, razor. But it is actually one of my um, favorite tools to um, work with. Some haircuts I, I I don't use it. Sometimes some haircuts I use a combination of all three. But um, it is one of my favorite tools because as a designer, as an artist, as a creative person, mm -hmm. these are the things that give me my my design. It's like this is like my piece of clay, or my I'm the potter and I'm molding and shaping my pottery. Or like we were saying um, in some of the classes that I used to. Um, workshops that I used to do was when you go to do your your design you kind of go you think about Michelangelo was a sculptor right did he see David the statue of David in his head or did statue David appear as he was sculpting away and he was using his tools to get that so this is um you know just one of my favorites it's just a, it's just a feather razor and as you can see, it's it's broken off compared to your like, like mine, yeah. But it's not fancy. It doesn't twirl. It doesn't. It's just you know why I like it because it, it fits good and it feels good in the palm of my hand. And I know my razor and I know what I can achieve with it and what um, designs I can create with it. So yeah. And I was sharing to Elizabeth that the way I'm holding my razor is very different because I do not use this part. And it's because my hands, is, they're tiny. And so I, it feels good for me to put my hands right here. And so then I can sometimes use my finger. I Then I can design. I can, you know, notch with it. I can do edging. And it's a lot more comfortable in my hand. 
if I would be using this little part, I would be too far away and I wouldn't have, sorry, I wouldn't have the control of the razor in my hand. It wouldn't feel natural. Exactly. exactly. Natural, right? Yeah. So that's important that it feels good in your hands and what works for you, then just do it, right? Exactly. And know your razor too, right? So, you know, the heel and the toe of the razor, right? The heel and the toe. So am I going to use in my sculpting, you know, am I going to use the whole blade? Am I going to use the tip of the blade? Am I going to use the bottom of the blade? Um, and then, you know, am I going to anchor my finger? Am I going to use my thumb and finger? You know, how am I going to maneuver this blade? to achieve what I uh, want in my design or my end result, right? But um, definitely when you are practicing uh, the confidence with it is, you know, get yourself a mannequin, right? Because if you happen to dip in too hard and, you know, it, you remove a lot of hair, it's a mannequin. So this is, this is uh, something that, you know, just keep around or um, use to practice and, uh, get creative with right right so my question to you and by the way i want to say hi to carlene because she's with us so <laughs> <laughs> now you know i call her coming. car bar superstar because that was <laughs> Thanks for connecting with us. Yeah. So my question to you, Elizabeth, is how comfortable do you feel cutting hair with the razor on dry hair? Great question. Thank you. Um, there, I would say cutting a razor on dry hair to the end. I would not, I would cut um, with damp or wet hair. And I also use, um, I also use one United, um, spray it in the hair so that it's like a cutting tool. Uh, even with our sheer work, you might just want to use uh, something that's just gonna give the hair a little bit of slip and a little bit of, you know, be able to move and not tangle up. So that's one of my favorite products for cutting is one united and then it stays in the hair. It's like a, a treatment. So you're prepping the hair with, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah cutting tool. Okay. Uh, dry hair razor cutting not is something that I would recommend. Um, mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of it, but if I was to do something with a razor technique on dry hair, it would be like just a little finishing thing at the end where let's say uh, my design is done and I just want to edge a little bit more of a fringe. Like I might just dip in and just kind of take a little bit more weight out of the fringe area so more so at the end of your design and being a little bit creative i i don't necessarily cut uh with a razor on dry hair but it's, it's definitely so i got a question here from carlene and that's a great question we're going to get into this is she said is there any hair you would never cut with the razor great question carlene <laughs> uh, well, I never say never. Um, you have to know your hair that you're working. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it fine? Is it coarse? Is it really coarse? Like some some it's curly hair can be very coarse. Is it naturally curly? Is it naturally textured? Is it naturally fuzzy? Is it super curly? Is it super super straight hair? Because Straight, straight, straight hair shows every cutting and edge, course, especially every yeah. scissor or razor. So um, know your client, know that hair before you, um, you know, definitely get creative, put your signature on that work, but uh, you have to trust your gut feeling, right? Um, and like what we were talking about at the beginning is we we cut hair more with our eyes because we're seeing what we're cutting. We cut hair with what we're, we feel we, it oh, yes. in our hands as we're cutting and we see as we're cutting with our eyes and we feel it. We feel that haircut transforming and coming out. But um, definitely 
know that hair before you put in any kind of razor technique that um, you're iffy on. Um, yeah. But I would say really super curly hair, um, use caution. Um, any kind of fuzzy hair, use caution. Um, any kind of very straight fine hair, use caution. Um, I would tend to go more scissor work, but there is a uh, curly hair technique that I am going to share with you that is one of my favorites. That okay. Yeah, for me personally, I wouldn't go uh, with curly, curly hair. I wouldn't touch it with the razor. I would prefer cutting it with the, the shears, the scissors. And then that's my personal opinion on that. But yeah, that's yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh now you texturize you use your razor to texturize more right yeah. uh, as we just touched about that so maybe you can show us a technique uh that you use in your salon for texturizing the hair so some of my go-to um razoring techniques that i that i love um just to put that personalization on the haircut um First of all, let's get into the why. Why, why, where, and when are we going to raise it, right? We've got this tool. We've got our head of hair. We know the hair. We like the direction the cut is taking, but we might want to put some installation of texture, some creativity. So when we are razoring, I, you know, first do your needs assessment, right? Like what is my hair texture that I'm working? And Here's the why that we're going to talk about. So you see how we have a natural bend to the hair. And we have a, a hang on. It's kind of hard working with that. So if I have a bend to the hair, if I put right some there. techniques below the wave or the natural bend of the hair, that's great if you want that hair to really explode or open up or you know like be a little bit more like a shattery kind of texture uh, where you're going to work below that wave when you want to work with the wave of the texture of that hair you're going to work your razor with that wave and then if you want to install texture from mid lengths to ends you're going to go above that wave makes sense Right? Yeah. So where, why, and how? So am I going to go be very careful using the razor close to the scalp, right? If you want a crazy, punky, spunky, spiky, yeah, go for it, right? Like shatter it out closer to the scalp area, um, working with the wave or above the wave. So you have to kind of ask yourself, where am I going to install? Why am I removing bulk? Am I making the ends swing a little bit more? Am I taking out some weight to the hair? Do I want that hair to react and stand up? So there's like, there's quite a lot of why and there's quite a lot right. of how and when. But and one thing I want to add to this is that if you go and you, you know, you see the, the wave. Okay. So do it. Pattern or the, the, the wave. pattern. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to go and cut the hair with the razor in the deep, the, the you know, the, yeah, exactly. The like the, exactly. Uh -huh. And if the hair is happened to be a little bit more curly, Mm. Then what it is is that if you're cutting in between, like in the in the in the wave, that's when we run into problem, and that's when the hair will go and will start sticking out every direction, and we'll do things that we don't want the hair to do. So you gotta like you wait, right? So right. You're, you're letting the, you're letting that wave expand. You're letting yeah. that wave do what a wave like it's doing what it does, right? Yeah. If, it's natural your pulse is natural wave so to to piggyback to this is that if you're going to cut you're going to cut higher above. than the wave exactly above exactly. above the wave or um so let's share a technique let's let's get okay the one, so, I, we're, we're like, you might get oh, a little bit more to okay. yep perfect okay. guys <laughs> okay 
No? Because it's yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Right. Uh, so let's say um, here's a bob. Um, it's the lady has fairly thick hair, um, about this average thickness or, uh, you know, wave and texture. Uh, so let's just say I want to, and you can see where that wave is happening right there. You can see where that wave is happening right there. Correct. So let's just say, I, I don't want to add any more into here because it's a bob, you know, it's going to lay a little bit flatter. Uh, but let's just say I want to kind of take some of that bulk out of the uh, mid legs to end. So one of my favorite techniques is I'm going to part usually on the parietal ridge and um, where we where we look for that is of course you're going to lay your comb flat and your comb flat right so there's the corner which is called the parietal ridge and so I'm going to also feel how much of this uh, weight do I want to remove remember we, we cut hair by visualization, we see it, we cut hair by feeling and how we feel about our work going in. So I'm going to take a section of hair and you also might want to stay a little bit away from the hairline around the front because we're working on the inside of the haircut as opposed to the outside of the haircut, the outside line of the haircut Put your texture on the inside of the haircut so makes, that makes sense louis because most of the time around the hairline it's always finer anyway absolutely absolutely right. so that's same thing know your hair know that client's hair know that client's hair texture so if i just want to remove some weight or bulk this works good too on some naturally curly hair or wavy hair and i'm just going to go in with my razor level to the ground, parallel to the ground, and I'm just going to weave with my razor like I would for foils. So that gets me into the whole maxi, mini, chunky, you know, whatever, you, how much weight you want to take out. So you want to create negative, positive space, right? So this would be an average weave that would be hair that would be a little bit bulky. Um, if you want to make it a little bit more chunky of a weave, that definitely is going to take out more hair, right? So am I going to um, have some too much hair coming out or not enough? So start slow and then build up if you're not as sure about what you're going to um, want to achieve in the end. So here again, we're just looking for the the bend of the hair yeah. so right in through the mid mid lengths to ends i'm going to go in i'm just going to do like a light weave something that's not too chunky and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to slide my razor down on the bottom <clears throat> half and then just gently bring it out and remove it there so then i can just comb that through and I can feel, you know, did I, did I take enough out? And if I feel that I didn't, you can still see the wave. Something that you don't want to do is this. No. Fluffing is not no. going to help you in seeing what your work is going to do. So you just want to make sure you're going to comb it and move it into natural falling position. And you're just going to see, okay, I kind of like that. I like that it's got a little bit less weight. Now, you might want to carry that through. Just bring your design line back again. Maybe the back has a little bit more weight or bulk. There again, too, I'm just going to look for the bend of my hair. Take my uh, razor and I'm just going to weave it through about the same, you know, average uh, weaving. And I'm just going to gently slide it through and then out to the ends. Perfect. I'm going to take that off and then just give it a little comb and a little bounce. And then you can just see how much weight is um, taken out there. Mm -hmm. Just how often would you change your blade? Uh, I change it about every two, three haircuts for sure. A nice sharp blade is important. You don't want to work with a dull blade. Um, 
and uh and see you <laughs> in the dark, right so it's like you know you just have a nice sharp pair of scissors and then it's like you're cutting like okay please don't cut myself please don't cut myself yeah, right? yeah. and uh, yeah. You know, something to that to to <laughs> mention is that sorry something to mention is that sometimes clients will say oh um this one of the biggest complaint i would hear in a salon is um you ask the client I've, can i cut your hair with the razor have you ever had a haircut with the razor before and they're mm -hmm. like oh yeah i have in the past but it's it's um my hair texture went funny and it was like you know just kind of dry on the ends and most of the time that's because people are not changing their blade uh regularly absolutely and they might have they might have put too much of the razor in the hair right too much texture in the hair yeah yeah okay um, awesome. yes yeah, interesting um when i was um we were talking earlier and i was saying that my one of my aunts lives in st louis missouri and she was quite excited about you know you're doing a razor cutting class oh my god she says like i i, I can't find anybody that knows how to cut hair with a razor and it's kind of sad to hear that because you're missing out on a, on a beautiful tool that creates and shapes and designs your signature, your look on that head of hair. So uh, anyways, I don't know if she's watching, but, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I hope to give my passion of cutting hair with the razor and, um, you know, just build up some confidence with it. And yeah. uh, definitely would I cut, the whole hair with a razor no it, it's it's a, an inspirational tool it's a, a technique tool it's um something that i want to install my texture and my own creativity and personal personality on my haircut so mm -hmm. sometimes uh, i do though sometimes i will cut the whole entire head of hair with the razor i just love it so much that's why yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. back at school you yeah had a fabulous teacher and school that had the passion for razor cutting and gave that to you, didn't they? Yeah, because I was not allowed at school. And maybe this is something that they're not teaching right now in school. But for me, when I took my hairdressing school, the first six months of my training was strictly and only with the razor. And then the last three months, they introduced the shear, which I was so excited. But then now I my passion is really with the razor i just yes. love because, it so you know you're it, it's 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 something that you like to work with it's something that you feel confident with you're passionate about it and you know it and you can see the result that you're trying to get with the razor technique right yes yeah and so if you can demon demonstrate the rolling razor yeah so so now I'm going to take that same technique and I'm going to add another level to that. So let's say we have really bulky hair um, and I just want to, um, I mean, of course we talked about earlier where you would, you know, dip in and, you know, remove. Notching. Notching. That's notching right here. Yeah. So, so that's when you take your razor and you go sideways and if you can yeah. demonstrate and then you go in the, a new piece of hair you go in and then that's notching it's called yeah. and be very careful when you do that too because if you're going to notch it vertically right you're just going to sort of grab some of uh, a little bit of ruffling of hair right, right? if you dip in hard you're going to get whoa a little bit of a hole right, um, right. If you dip in on a 45 remember three basic lines right horizontal vertical diagonal if you start going in on an angle, you're going to definitely take a little bit more weight out because your hair is at a horizontal, right? So remember your principles, right? So that's going to remove a lot of hair. So however much notching or what did you call it? Uh, notching. Yeah. yeah. Notching. Um, on long hair, on long hair, that I use a fair bit uh, to, to finish or personalize or notch in long hair. And I just glide the razor through. Yeah. And then and there's look and see how much of that bulk is coming out. Yeah. There's their edging. So you can yeah. do small edging or large edging. And that is when you're creating, okay, so you would create 
like this with your razor. Okay. So okay. you're doing on the edges. This, this, and yeah. this, 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 and and so that's edging. Okay. Yeah, well, there we go. Love it. <laughs> so and then you remember one of the your you probably were famous for that one, which is like the the rolling the, the razor. Oh gosh, yeah. Now oh. listen, I'm gonna give Wayne Grun some credit here because there we go. You know, the master razor uh you know has been uh, a true wonderful friend for many, many years. Uh Wayne he's very passionate about cutting hair with a razor. If you do ever get a chance to see some of his uh videos or whatever he's working on with razor man that that guy knew how to cut hair with a razor any confidence and also no fear like no fear. just go for it right yeah like, make sure you've got some mannequins at home that you're just going to try some techniques before you um <laughs> And with your clients right but yeah i mean absolutely so yeah that was one and that that's wayne's where you roll the razor and you just kind of flick it and you're lifting and flicking and it's kind of like a little showstopper right but yeah yeah but that you have to make sure there where you don't stop your eyes you're cutting with your eyes and you can feel it like this is so sharp i don't want to remove all that but i'm also lifting and rolling and then you can see how i'm just kind of separating out that bulk in the ends right yeah so for me when i do the rolling razor is i will i will start from the top and then roll it down like just so roll roll yeah. roll it down yeah. exactly yeah exactly so let's go back to that other weaving technique um and i'm just going to put a little bit more water on my mannequin and I just want to explain one more so you can see look at how that that wave is coming out now it's just got a little bit more spunk a little oh that's nice but you know that's yeah. it we're, we we cut hair with our eyes we cut hair with our hands and we cut hair with our heart right we feel right. it we see it we touch it yeah. and then it's, that's the creativity that's the money piece right yeah and um so just we're gonna go back to that we so bring your mannequin more okay. inward yeah that's perfect. Okay. Keep me on my toes there, Isabel. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's let's so let's talk about that weaving technique again. So we want to remove a little bit of weight or bulk. Again, we're looking for the bend of the hair. And so this time, um, I want to create some texture in the inside of the haircut okay so i'm going to take my razor make sure you have enough hair that you can handle don't don't take too much hair in your hand that's it's too you don't have control okay yeah can you see okay here yes it right. is perfect and we're going to dip in with the razor i'm going to do like an average weave so separation and now what I'm doing is I'm twirling my razor in the Oh, middle. wow. Okay. Um, That's a different one, that one. And then so you're, you're like, you're moving your razor. Oh, so I could And then it. bring that out to the ends and then on the ends. All right. Okay. All right. So let's do like that. that. So remember, watch your hairline with the razor. So let's go. So and that would be like the motion would be you're flipping yeah. between Inside, the I'm turning this way. razor perfect I'm lifting the top and i'm touching the bottom i'm lifting the top and i'm touching the bottom i'm lifting the top cut with your eyes make sure you're seeing what you're cutting on that one mm. so let's do that one more time can you see okay there yeah that's better okay all right so an average weave. I'm not micro, maxi, mini. I'm just average weave. Okay, so I'm coming above and then below. Oh, that's different. Okay. Above and below, above and below, above and below. And I'm just twisting and twirling my razor. And then let's just say I might just want to dip in the ends. That, yeah, right. Just removing that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I have to say those two are my favorite. Those two are my go-to 
uh, to uh, remove some weight, uh, like, you know, positive negative space, if you want to get kind of creatively creative words in there. But mm -hmm. it just gives the hair, uh, takes some of the bulk up. Actually, that's kind of nice how it just See how that just gives a little bit more. Well, it creates movement. And like you said before, it creates space, right? And that's what negative, positive, that's what we want to do. Yeah. And so that's why, like, now more and more we're seeing styles that are more layers. They're just Shay is movement. So hot right now. So yeah, <laughs> it's so exciting. Yeah. I just... You know, I mean, we've, we've done that long time ago, 30 years ago, but we're coming back to it. And it's it's actually really, really exciting. And, and it's fun to see how it's come back in a new inspiration. That yeah. it's not, I mean, I watched a documentary the other day on CBC. And I got to say, one person who really rocked the shag was Anne Murray. And it was a documentary on Anne Murray from... You know, she's she she lives here now in Halifax and she's retired here. But man, she had some great fun haircuts. Short hair, right? She yeah, short, yeah. Short haircuts. She kind of grew it out a little longer and shorter and longer and shorter. But if you want to see the shag from you know the 70s and those that generation, what it was a CBC um program on Anne Murray's life and you know, all the, the legacy of uh, where she's been with her career. And it's fascinating, right? Yeah. So to see the style. And uh, this is so interesting. And, and, you know, I think what we need to do is in the uh, next couple of months or so, we need to go and we need to talk more about these, these kind of um, hairstyle. And because this is all the time that we have today, we went over time, but this is when we yeah. have so much to talk about. Yeah, but, that's technique for next time. Yeah, for sure. Okay, one but, more um, chevrons. I'll, I'll save the chevrons for next time when we come back. And, yeah. And this yeah. is one thing I wanted to talk about too, is that the, what really distinguish a haircut is your fringe and it's your nape area. And this is, we're, I'm going to leave it like this. We're going to leave it. So next time we we can have content to talk about because it is so important. And what we can do with the razor for these two area is. is we'll come back. We'll come back in come back. February because today is the last day of January. Yay. Something about leaving that month behind and going into February. It's like, oh. Spring is coming, right? It's a good. Uh, Carlene said on, on super straight hair, uh, do the same rules apply? Uh, keep talking to me. What? What? Keep. What do you mean? Keep talking about what? Uh, do the same rules apply for? Let's clarify. For. Not sure, but we can. We can. Uh, Super straight hair, is that what she's asking? She says, yeah, on super okay. straight hair, the same rule apply uh, where to start, where to start to probably to texturize. Okay, so, okay, so Carlene, is it long hair that's super straight one length or oh. is it already uh, like some layering in the haircut? In the mid shaft, like where to start in the mid shaft. I tend to start in the back in the nape section when I am doing texturizing on longer hair because when you look at the principles of head form right the front we only have so much hair but the back we have so much more hair so I would start with the back I would start with the underneath start to take how much I want to texture right. up, how much I want to razor from underneath because this is going to lay on top of it right so I would get into my haircut from the bottom and the back. I would not go into the sides yet until I saw what it looked like from the back. That right? makes sense. Much more hair and volume in the back of the nape and the, and the crown and the top. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, as opposed to the side. Because the side, right, we only have this much hair. Yeah. But in the back, we have this much hair, right? So um, you definitely want to start your installation. I would do in the nape section about two inches above 
the hairline, start, look at the process, take a step back, see how much you're removing, then go up another inch, stop, take a step back and go up another inch. So I would do that in about three panels, take a look and see, did I, did I get enough of that out of there that I was looking for? Yeah. Like how does that feel? How does that look? Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. That's good advice. Oh, no flapping like that. Because it's very <laughs> you just want to take a look at it. You just want to like put it into place and feel it, get your fingers in there and feel it because that is where we see and we feel and we touch and we can see our design and have a look at it from that. But yeah, definitely about two inches from the hairline, then go up another inch and then go up another inch and then stop because you don't want to start, if it's long hair and fine and straight, yeah. Okay, that's so good. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, so I want to um, to basically ask everybody to keep checking in the webpage for If Hair Pro, and we're gonna schedule something in the next you know <laughs> month or two, and we're gonna come back and we're gonna give yeah. more education. And it's about this is exactly what this platform is for. It's about sharing our knowledge, um, sharing ideas, and we can do it for free, and we can just have a community amongst stylists but you know why don't we take it one step further why don't we get our guests watching to direct questions to you yeah yes and then we can we can facilitate those questions on our next uh broadcast and then if you if there's something that you would like to see that uh you're not sure about or yes. you want some validation on or you want to feel more comfortable about uh definitely throw some questions to isabel or myself i'd be happy to uh answer questions and then we'll come back in about a month and we'll share some more techniques because i mean the razor there's like thousands and and it's just it can be endless but you know just in any in any situation you always just want to make sure that you're confident with your tool. Um, like I say, this one's not fancy. I've had this one. I got this at the Winnipeg ABA show many, 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 many moons ago. And it just was my favorite because it was neon. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my end is broken on it. But you know what? I just love it. It just, I just know this tool and I can create anything. Uh, so find that tool that you want to work with and, you know, be the expert in that and yeah. just feel confident about it. But, yeah. you know, happy to share today and happy to see you as always, Isabel. And me too, Liz. Me yeah. too. Oh my God. So yeah. much fun. Yeah. Uh, Carlene <laughs> says, yay, more Liz and Isa. And is <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to take it on the road <laughs> we will we will this is um you know i mean cutting hair is my passion and um it's always been my passion uh you know color absolutely design absolutely creativity absolutely but you know what when that guest or that client has a fantastic haircut they feel great and they're confident and they go out into the world and they were having the best hair day and uh you know it, it not only it's that the, it's the experience too liz it's an experience for them it's something different so, and, and people look for hairstylists that are different and so there you go and be that expert in that you know whether it's curly hair or highlights or uh, you know, you might be the best blow out, blow dry queen out there, right? So find out what your passion is though too, right? Because we are truly great when we act from passion, when, you know, we, it, it gets us going and us excited too, right? When we can give our guests and our clients, um, you know, all our little hip pocket full of tricks and put them into yeah. the design and, and create our beautiful sculpture, David, right? Like one day I hope I get to see the, the statue of David and, you know, just kind of, um, there you go. Fire a sculptor's Michelangelo's 
So remember, you are a Michelangelo and you are sculpting your David or you're sculpting your statues and uh, get creative. Um, get yourself some mannequins so that you can practice. Practice always makes perfect too, right? There we go. We're going to leave our audience. So, yes. And thank you. This was an thank awesome episode you. of in between hairstylists i look forward to more conversation more education and let's keep on sharing we'll come back yeah okay bye for now thank <laughs> bye. you thank you for your time